Hi students, welcome to round 12 of the Mimic Social Simulation. This is our final round and we will be completing the last section of social media, which includes organic posts, paid posts, as well as selecting and negotiating with influencers. If we start out by clicking on our inbox, you'll notice that much of the information presented here from the Vice President of Marketing is very similar to the information provided from last week. So I will let you look through this on your own, but what I'm taking away from this inbox information is that this is our last week. So we want to dig into our results. We want to identify what's working. We want to minimize posts on platforms that are not performing well, and we want to continue to experiment. So this is our last opportunity to try something new. If you are a student in one of my classes this semester, please remember that I do drop your lowest two simulation rounds. So I do encourage you to experiment because it might work out really well and give you great results, or if it does not work out as well as you had hoped, this could be a round that you drop. And unfortunately, you won't know until you try. So let's go ahead and click on results. When clicking on my results, what I wanna look for in this round is I wanna click on the post history because if you remember, it gives me information on all of the previous rounds and I can sort it by all channels or individual specific platforms. I wanna go ahead and sort by all channels because I want to look to see which platforms performed the best and which types of posts performed the best over the entire simulation up until this point. So I'm going to scroll down and again, if you're in my class, remember I'm grading you on impressions engagements, clicks, and conversions. So I want to look at each of these four metrics. So the first metric I click on is the impressions. And I can see that I have three sponsored posts on YouTube, followed by two sponsored posts on TikTok, and then one sponsored post on Pinterest. So overall, I can see that my impressions are highest for my sponsored posts. And I can see that the posts on YouTube are higher than the posts on TikTok and Pinterest. So I will likely create another sponsored post this week on YouTube. Let's look at our engagements. If we look at engagements, we have no change. We've got our top three YouTube posts, two TikTok posts, and one Pinterest. So looking at engagements, this stays exactly the same. I can also see that again, YouTube is quite a bit higher, especially this first post, than my post down here on Pinterest and even some of my TikTok posts. Let's click on the clicks. So again, no change in the order of my top posts. And finally, we'll click on conversions. So on conversions, we can see my YouTube posts have stayed in the exact same, uh, exact same manner for the entire time. However, now my Pinterest post moves up above my TikTok posts in terms of conversions. If I look at Pinterest, we have 453 conversions compared to 408 and 389. I can also look at my revenue and my revenue follows the same pattern as my conversions. So what this tells me is that YouTube and I'm going to say TikTok are performing the best in terms of my metrics. So I want to make sure that I run a YouTube advertisement as well as a TikTok advertisement. This time I am not going to run an advertisement on Pinterest and instead 
my organic posts that performed the best were two Instagram posts. So instead of creating an Instagram post that is organic, I'm actually going to go ahead and create a third paid advertisement this week and run it on Instagram to see how well an Instagram advertisement does for me. If I look at my influencer history, I can scroll down and look at all of my influencers. And let's again sort on some of these metrics. I can see that Chris Renald is performing the highest for me on impressions. We do have one post from Kathy Berry here in the middle, but then again, we have many more Chris Renald posts. We can click on engagements and we see roughly the same pattern, except this time Kathy Berry did move down a little bit and the Chris Renald Facebook posts moved up. We could also click on likes and as expected, we see the exact same pattern as engagements. Let's look at our clicks. Again, very similar. We can see that Chris Renald is performing really well. If I look at conversions, I expect roughly the same thing. This time, however, we do see that Ryan Ball has moved up into the top 10, although Ryan is listed at number 10. Lastly, let's look at my revenue. And once again, Chris Renald is producing the highest amount of revenue, although the revenue per platform is not as high as the revenue on many of my paid social posts. So this is one thing to keep in mind. While I do have a high number of impressions for my influencer, my revenue is not quite as high. If I come back and look at my post history and sort by revenue, I can see that my top revenue was over 102,000. Then we're looking at 30,000, 18,000, 16,000, 15,000. Whereas my influencer revenue is much lower at 5,000. So this is something to keep in mind going forward as well. All right, let's go ahead and start with our influencers this week. So I want to use Chris Renald one more time. So I'm going to select influencers first because I do want to make sure that I can get Chris Renald. And then as noted before, we will create three paid social posts together and I am going to leave you to create your own organic social posts this week. So let's click on Schedule Influencer. We want to select Mega. We want to select Chris Renald. Affiliate marketing seems to be working well, so let's go with that. I will have Chris make one post, and I've offered him $2,500 in the past, so I think I'll try $2,500 again. Excellent. Chris says we do have a deal, so let's go ahead and confirm this offer. So we can see now our balance has gone down to $2,500. So let's click on our paid social posts and we will create three. We'll create one post for YouTube, one post for TikTok, and one post for Instagram. Let's go ahead and start with our Instagram post first. So I can click on Instagram. For Instagram, I am going to go ahead and run a sale. So I want my campaign objective to be conversions. My post headline will be New Year's sale. My post text will be what's better than a New Year's resolution, a New Year's sale. Enjoy 25% off all Vui products this week only. So the media that I'm going to select 
will relate to a New Year's sale. And I will select this New Year's sale. It is $50 and that's okay. We are going to select our call to action as shop now, because remember we were focusing on conversions. My daily budget, I am going to give a daily budget of $105. For the sake of time, I pre-created saved audiences and I created an Instagram audience, my age range 18 to 54, both genders, and I selected several different interests. So I will go ahead and schedule this post for Instagram. So now I can see that I have $1,715 left in my budget. Let's create our second advertisement on YouTube. For YouTube, I am going to focus on website traffic. I don't think we've selected website traffic before, so let's try traffic. My post headline will be time to unwind. My post text will be unwind and unburden, how my trusty bag accompanies me everywhere. So the video that we are selecting is resting outside and we have user generated content, a testimonial from a woman with her buoy bag. Our call to action, if you remember, we are trying to generate website traffic. So I think we will select learn more. So hopefully people will visit our website to learn more. My YouTube budget, I am going to give a daily budget of $110. And I'll use again one of my saved audiences. This time I'll use what's called the outdoors audience, ages 22 to 50, both genders and several interests listed here. So I can go ahead and schedule my post. Now I have $945 remaining, so I will click on TikTok to create my last post. For TikTok, I want to increase my reach, so I'll click Awareness and Reach. I'll create my post. My post text says street style, style on fleek and my bag game is strong. Here's why my bag is my ultimate accessory. And the media that I'm going to select is punchy streetwear. So again, we have user generated content and a testimonial from a woman on her buoy bag. My call to action, because my objective was reach, let's do watch video. And my daily budget is going to be $135, which comes out to my total balance of $945. My saved audience this time is going to be the TikTok audience. So 18 to 35, both genders and selected interests. So I'll click select this audience and schedule this post. So now I have used all of my budget and I would recommend that you guys create organic social posts to try to increase some of your metrics. So maybe you want to focus on increasing impressions or engagements, clicks, conversions. Maybe you want to increase revenue. So I would use this organic post section to try to boost some of those metrics that might be coming out lower based on the decisions you made for the influencers and the paid social posts. For the video, I'm just going to create these two sections. I'll leave organic social posts blank and I will come down and run my simulation. 
it does tell me that I should complete the organic social posts, but I don't really want to for the sake of the video, otherwise it'll be too long. So we'll just go ahead and click Run Simulation. And we'll see what our results come back with. Okay, let's start out again by looking at our post history. So let's see how our sponsored posts did for this week. Let's again look at all channels. So remember, we created three paid social posts, one for YouTube, one for TikTok, and one for Instagram. Okay, this time my YouTube post performed fourth. So unfortunately, it was my lowest YouTube post in terms of impressions. Unfortunately, I've still never been able get to get back up to this 133,000 impressions, but we keep trying. My second post on TikTok, unfortunately, this was my lowest TikTok post in terms of impressions, but if we look over, it does come out to be the highest TikTok post in terms of revenue. And then the last post I created is on Instagram, which has the lowest impressions in terms of my sponsored posts. And it looks like it is much lower in terms of revenue as well. If we click on engagements, let's see, does any of this change? My TikTok post moved into the second position of TikTok. And unfortunately, my sponsored Instagram post is now behind an organic. Instagram post, so that's not great since I spent a lot of money on it. We can look at clicks, kind of information falling in about the same patterns. Let's look at conversions and then we'll click on revenue. In terms of conversions, my YouTube video this time moved up one spot. In conversions, my TikTok post move to the highest TikTok position. And it looks like my Instagram post moved up just slightly as well. This should be basically the same for revenue. Yes. Okay, let's go look over at the influencer history. Actually, this time let's click on influencer analytics so we can see how well Chris Renald performed in this round for us. So we can see that 2.8 million impressions were generated, 177 conversions, and $12,000 in revenue. If we look at our influencer history all together, let's see if we can figure out which posts these were. It looks like my TikTok post was the highest, the highest in terms of impressions. It looks like this Instagram post was actually also the highest in terms of impressions. Same for the Facebook post. Looks like my revenue was second here. My revenue was number 10 for Instagram and a little bit lower than the middle for Facebook, if I'm looking at the correct posts. So all in all, this round for Chris Renald did pretty well. Let me click up on the rankings to see how I performed in terms of the class that I'm playing in. When looking at the class that I'm playing in, I am ranked number 10 in terms of revenue and number eight in terms of impressions. So this is our last round. This is our last video for the semester. I wish you guys luck on this last round. Please let me know if you have any questions and good luck.